Hello, and welcome to week number 11 pre-college math <clears throat> lesson tutorial. Let's begin. This week, we're going to be talking about transformations. Um, we're going to be talking about transformations of all different types of graphs. And it doesn't even have to be a parent function to be shifted from left to right, up and down, and, and the horizontal and, and vertical stretches. Um, it can be any type of graph. And you'll see that on the, on the assessment this week, that I have some pretty interesting graphs on there that aren't parent functions. But you use the same concepts um, when you're graphing them out. So the first thing that we're going to talk about today is we're going to talk about shifting graphs. But the first thing I really want to talk about is the parent functions. Because if you don't know what the parent functions are, there's no way to be able to graph all of the or do all of the transformations on these parent functions. So what are the parent functions that we're going to really focus in on today? Well, there's a couple of them. Um, the first one, let me turn my marker on here so you can see this, um, absolute value. You really need to know the absolute value graph. So the absolute value graph starts here. The slope is one here. The slope is negative one here. The V shape starts at the origin. Why is it called the parent function? Because this is the simplest absolute value function there is. We're going to also talk about the quadratic. This is the quadratic parent function. Why is it the quadratic parent function? Because it is the simplest quadratic you can have. X squared, that's it. Now, if you did x squared plus 1, that doesn't have a parent function anymore because now it's being shifted. So the parent function is always starts at the origin here. x to the third, we're going to talk about today. So it starts at 0, then it goes up, goes down. We're also going to talk about the square root function. These are the parent functions that we are going to be graphing the most today. Now, as I said, the shifts work for all graphs. It doesn't really matter. You know, once you learn how to shift a graph, it doesn't matter if it's a quadratic, a, an absolute value, a cubic, a square root, it makes no difference. The same rules apply to all of them. So um, once you learn the rules, you should be able to shift graphs around easily. All right, so let's, uh, let's go to the next slide. The first shift that we're going to be talking about is what is called a vertical shift. And a vertical shift can happen upward, up or down. So if you take a look at the parent function for a quadratic, okay? Parent function for a quadratic is up on the board. It's x squared. Y is equal to x squared. It's the blue line. And then what we can do is we can we can change. We can we can add numbers to it. So if I had y is equal to x squared, uh oh, marker. Let me um, change this. If I times my marker really goes crazy. So if I have y is equal to x squared plus 1, well, this number back here tells me that I'm shifting the graph up one unit. If I have y is equal to x squared minus 2, well, this is telling me I'm shifting the graph down two units. This is where the Desmos calculator comes in really um, great, because you can take a look at the Desmos calculator, and you can just start shifting these graphs up and down. And I am going to do that. Um, I wasn't going to do that, but I, I think I am. Um, so I'm going to pull up my Desmos calculator. We'll be using it a little bit today. All right. Um, let's see here. So there's a calculator, but I need to, I'm hoping that this is going to show up here. So I need to share my screen. Okay, so share application screen. I'm going to share a tab here. Desmos calculator. All right. Uh oh, <laughs> that's not what I want. Let's get out of here. Oh, no. Let's click out of here and just do this again. I don't know why that came up. Thing. All right, so I probably have to turn this off and turn it back on here. Sorry about that. Uh, share application screen, home tab, Desmos graphing, share. All right. So now you should be able to see the Desmos calculator. Okay. So if I if I use the parent function x squared, okay, y is equal to x squared, you will see that's the parent function. Now let's say I'm going to add. I'm just going to do another equation. Uh, y is equal to x squared plus 2. And you can see right away, 
that it just shifts the graph up two units. Let's try y is equal to x squared minus 2. Let's go minus 4. You can see that it shifts the graph down four units. Now, Desmos calculator is pretty cool because uh, in red, you can see the red one is the red graph here. The blue one is the blue graph. The green one is the green graph, right? So those are the types of things that you can do with Desmos calculator. So you can see that just adding or subtracting a number from a function is going to shift the graph up or down as many as you, whatever the number is behind. If it's two, it's going to shift it up two. If it's minus four, it's going to shift it down four. Now, that's with a quadratic. Now, some kids are going to say, well, Mr. Shanklin, what happens if I use an absolute value function? Uh, good question. Guess what? It doesn't change. The rules stay the same. i got to find the absolute value function here. So the absolute value out of x squared of just x. Okay, and I'm going to clear this one out. I'm going to clear this one out. So y is equal to, oops, that's not right. Let's put an x in there. All right, so there's the absolute value function. So what if I wanted to shift that graph up three units? Well, then all I do is I go y is equal to um, the absolute value of x plus, let's say I'm going to shift it up two places, plus two. Moves the graph up two places. It doesn't matter what the parent function is. Adding a number or subtracting a number is going to just move the graph from or up and down. That is called a vertical shift. So really fairly easy to do when you understand the rules and it works for all um, functions. I mean, it doesn't matter what the parent function is. That is the rule. If you add a number, it's going to shift it up and down. Okay, so let me get back to my slideshow here. And you can see um, if the C is positive, a real number, the graph of X graph of X plus C is the graph and it's shifted upwards, C units. Uh, if it's a negative, going to shift it down C units. So here's an absolute value. Absolute value of x plus 3 is going to shift it up 3 units. F of x is the absolute value, so that's the blue one. And f of x is the absolute value of x minus 4, just shifts it down 4 units. So as I said, it's going to work for all functions. So if I asked you to graph out um, y is equal to, oops, i got to turn my, my if I asked you to graph out y is equal to the square root of x plus 3, well, first of all, you have to know what the square root graph looks like. Well, we learned that the parent function looks something like this. So plus 3, it's just going to shift it. 1, 2, 3. So now it's going to look something like this. If I gave you y is equal to um, x to the third minus 2, well, x to the third looks like this graph right here. So if I'm going to subtract 2, it's going to go down here. So now it's going to look more like this. So it's just shifting the whole graph up or down. That is what a vertical shift does to the graph. All right. So let's take a look at a practice problem from this week. It says, use the graph of f of x equals x squared to write an equation for the function whose graph is shown. Okay, well, that is a quadratic, so I know it's going to be y is equal to uh, y. <laughs> sometimes sometimes this marker just goes nuts okay so i have y is equal to x squared that's my parent function it's being shifted down one two three places so minus three there is my equation for that quadratic and that's why once you understand um how shifting works with graphs it's so easy and and it's like I don't need a graphing calculator anymore. I know exactly what those graphs are going to look like. As long as I understand what the parent function is, I get what it's going to look like. So let's try another um, practice problem here. Okay, so I know that's the absolute value um, graph because that's the parent function, and it looks like it's being shifted up two places. So I'm going to go letter E. It is the absolute value of X plus 2, just being moved up two units. Okay, so... Shifting something up and down, fairly easy. Now we're going to shift it left and right. Okay, so how do how do I get a graph? So if this is my parent function, absolute value of x, if I want to graph it way over here, I want to shift it and I want to put it way over here. That is a, also a transformation. So how do we transform a graph left and right? Well, that's the next slide. If 
we're going to shift a graph from left to right, then we do it inside the function. So if I want to shift the graph to the right, I do x minus c. And it seems really weird that we would do x minus c to move to the right and x plus c to move to the left. That is exactly what happens. So if you don't agree with that, let's go back to Desmos. And this is where Desmos calculator is so awesome. I remember when I was in school, there was no such thing as, uh, I mean, we had, we had little science calculators, no graphing calculators. So we weren't able to, we, you know, in order to, to show um, graphs moving, we had to plot a hundred points and, and it took forever. So now let's go back. I'm going to take you back to Desmos calculator. Share the application screen here. Okay. So let's say I wanted, so let's get rid of this one here. I want to move this graph over to here, over to the four. Okay. Um, I want it to be uh, the square root of X. I want it, whoa, I don't know what happened there. Oh, I can't draw on the screen. Ha. I was just going to draw in what I wanted to see, but that's okay. Um, I'll be able to just punch in an equation. So now, I know that my equation is y is equal to square root of x. I want to move it four places to the right. So I'm just going to type in my equation. I'm going to go y is equal to uh, the absolute value of x. But inside the parentheses, I am going to put minus 4 because that is going to shift my graph four places to the right. What if I wanted to shift it two places to the left? Well, guess what? I'm just going to y is equal to the absolute value of x minus, uh, sorry, x, I said I was going to shift it to the left, x plus 2. How cool is that? Being able to shift the graph left and right and all that. So now what happens? Can I put more than one transformation together? Absolutely. So let's say I want to shift this graph. I wanted to shift this graph um, four places over and four places up. So I want the origin to be right here. Well, not a big deal. I just have to type in y is equal to uh, absolute value. I'm going to shift it four places to the right. So x minus 4. Okay, And then I close off that absolute value symbol here. Um, is, uh, and then I want to shift it up 4, so plus 4. And it sh So I shift it over, and I shifted it up. So inside, the absolute value symbol is going to move it left and right, and the outside is going to move it up and down. Does it work for all functions? Absolutely. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. So let's go back to our x squared. All right. Oops. I'm going to put an equal sign in there. Y is equal to that x squared. Let's say I want to shift it four places to the right. Not a problem. So now all I do is I go y is equal to, and then x minus 4 quantity squared. I just shifted that whole graph over four places to the right. I want to shift it to the left. Let's say I want to shift it uh, two places to the left. I'm going to go y is equal to x plus 2 squared. And see how the, and it, it doesn't seem right that adding 2 would shift it to the left. But that is how, that's how it works. Pretty cool, hey? Being able to shift the graph, these are called transformations. We're transforming, we're taking the parent function and we're moving it left, right, up, down. Um, once you understand this, it is like, you know, when the light bulb went off in my head when I was in college, it's like, oh my goodness, I can graph so many different things now that I couldn't before because now I understand how the, the graph is being shifted. It's like, as long as you know the parent functions, it's fairly easy to do. All right, let me go back to, I'm going to turn this off. Go back to my slides here. And I got to get to the right slide. Okay, so we're shifting, shifting, shifting. Yep. So here. So it says use the graph of x to the third. Okay, so that's this blue one here. To graph f of x minus 2. Okay, so that means it's going to be shifted two places to the right. And x plus 4, which is going to shift it two places. Oh, this is uh, this should be a 3 up here, not a 2, because uh, that, that would be a quadratic, not a cubic. Um, so that would be shifted four places. So they really messed up there. There should be a 3 there. 
Didn't look at my slides before I put them in. All right, so now let's take a look at this one. Uh, okay, it says graph the function square root of x plus five minus four. Well, right away I look at this and I'm I'm thinking, okay, this five, this plus five is going to shift to the left. Okay, so it's going to shift. Oops, I have to turn my pen back on. Sorry about that. So it's going to be shifted left five places, and it's going to be shifted down four places. Okay, so I know it starts here, so I'm going to shift over five places to the left and four places down. One, two, three, four. So instead of having my graph start here and look like this, it's going to start here and look exactly the same thing. It's just, it's being shifted over. That is the cool thing about these types of graphs. It's like, you know, you're just shifting graphs. So let's do a few examples here. So, oops, oh, there's the, there's the graph. They did it all in steps. They moved it down four, and then they moved it over five. You should be able to do it on one step. So now let's say I asked you to um, graph Again, sorry, I, sometimes my, my pen just goes nuts. Um, so let's turn that back on. So let's say I asked you to graph y is equal to um, x minus three squared plus four. Okay, so I know that this is being shifted three places to the uh, left. So one, two, three, four places up, one, two, three, four. So now my, my graph is gonna look like this. It's the same quadratic as before, I mean, it's the same parent function. Here's my parent function. It's just being shifted. That is why it's so cool to be able to shift graphs because now, it's like, you know, they give you a graph. It's like, oh, that's things moving to the left. Oh, darn it. I really messed up on here, didn't I? I am sorry, guys. I apologize. <laughs> y is equal to x minus 3 squared plus 4 is not this graph. X minus three moves it to the right three places. I'm moving to the right three places and then four up. I apologize. Should be going this way. All right, sorry about that. All right, so here are the rules for shifting graphs. Something awesome to put in your notes. A vertical shift, C units up, would be F of X plus C. Uh, C units down would be F of X minus C. If I'm gonna do a horizontal shift, which means I'm I'm moving it left and right. I'm going to move it to the right. It's going to be x minus c inside and f plus c on the other, or on the inside if I'm moving it to the left. So those are these are all called transformations. We're transforming the the place the graph is shifted. Now the graph never changes, right? The, the absolute value, the parent function never changes the form. It always looks exactly the same. It's just we're we're changing, uh, you know, where the basically where the origin is. All right. Let's try this problem here. It says, identify the parent function. Well, definitely an x to the third. Um, and the transformation shown at the right. Write an equation for the function. Well, it looks like it's being shifted three places to the right. So that would be x minus three. So y is equal to, so there's an x to the third. That's my parent function. And then my equation is x minus three to the third because it's being shifted three places to the right. It is a horizontal shift because I'm moving horizontally. Okay. How about one more? G is, re is related to the parent function. Use the function notation to write G in terms of F. Okay, so um, X to the third, that's my parent function. So it's just going to be F to the third plus five. So it's just taking the function, adding five. So that's just my how I would write it in function notation letter D. Now we can also, so we're moving graphs left, right, up, down. We can also reflect them. Uh, we can do reflections. Uh, reflection on a graph. So for example, if I put a negative in front of my x squared here, it reflects it on the x-axis. So a reflection about, the, for, it's the x-axis. If we put it out in front, we can also Flip it about the y-axis. Um, if you put the negative sign inside the parentheses, then it's going to reflect it on the y-axis. And when you have a quadratic, it's not real easy to 
to show that. But if you had a cubic function, if I had a cubic function like this, no, stop it. <laughs> All right, erase that. Um, if you had a cubic function, like x to the third, um, the graph of that look like this. But if I wanted to do, um, and this is where it gets a little, a little wonky with, because we can, we can do f of x, and that's going to reflect it around the x-axis. If I do f of negative x, then it's going to flip it on the y-axis. So this is going to come down like this. So reflection on the y-axis kind of is a, a weird way to reflect it, but it does do it. Now, there's another type of transformation, okay? And that is non-rigid transformations, okay? What we just what we just talked about were rigid transformations. What does that mean? Rigid transformation means that if you have a parent function, it's not changing the shape of the graph. If I if this is y is equal to x squared, and I wanted to graph y is equal to x squared plus two, this graph stays exactly the same. It's just shift it up two units. It's not going to change the shape of the graph. It's the same. That's why those are called rigid transformations. Now, a non-rigid transformation, what's going to happen is we're going to put a number like, we'll put like y is equal to um, 3x squared. That 3 there to change the shape of my graph. It's going to be much thinner now than it was before. If the number in front is greater than 1, it makes your graph much thinner. And if it's less than one, if I had y is equal to one half x squared, well now that graph is going to be much wider than the parent function. So those are called non-rigid transformations because the parent function, it's still the parent function. It's still gonna be a parabola, except it's going to change the shape of it. It's gonna be thinner or it's gonna be wider. That's what a non-rigid uh, transformation is going to do. So if you look here, horizontal shifts, vertical shifts, and reflections are rigid transformations because the basic shape of the graph is unchanged. These transformations change only the position of the graph in the coordinate plane. Non-rigid transformations are those that cause a decision, a change in the shape of the original graph. For instance, a non-rigid transformation of the graph of y is equal to f of x is represented by g of x equals c f of x. So if you bring a number out in front, where the transformation is a vertical stretch when c is greater than one. Now, I always say that in the vertical stretch is basically making it thinner, and a vertical shrinking makes it wider. So if it's between zero and one, one half, it's gonna make the graph much wider. And we can check that out. Um, you can go back to Desmos and you can plug in, you know, you could try. So let's let's try that again. So I'm going to take us back to Desmos here. Let's see here, share application screen. Yep. Home tab, Desmos. Okay. So let's um, let's keep the parent function there. Let's get rid of this and this. Okay. So I, it's equal, equal to 3x three three squared. So look at that. Look what happens to the graph. It gets thinner. And for those of you that really understand graphing quadratics, um, I can't write on that screen. <laughs> I was going to show you what really is happening here. And then let's say I, I gave you y is equal to, let's go, 1 half is really 0.5, right? So I'm just going to put it as 0.5 x squared. It's going to make it wider. So that's, those are called non-rigid transformations. They're changing the shape of the graph to make it wider or thinner. It's still basically the same concepts. I mean, it, it's still a transformation, and those transformations uh, help us be able to graph these types of functions out. All right, let's see here. Back to my tutorial. All right. Um, I think that was basically it. Oh, let's check this one out. Oh, we did that problem already. Transformations, yep. So I have a couple examples of transformations. So here, here is a three absolute value of x. So that means that the slope is going to be three now instead of one, because usually there's a one in front of here. So if you take a look here, 
this is a slope of three instead of one. If you did one third absolute value of x, well, now my slope is going to be one third, and you'll see that it's, it's wider. So those are the types of transformations that we'll be working on this week. Now, let's say I gave you a, a graph like, I don't know, I'm, I'm just going to make one up here. Um, y is, I'm going to change this, y is equal to, and or I'll just say uh, the graph below is f of x. Okay, So I'm going to give you graph um, of f of x. And I'm going to put points in there. Right? So here's my graph of f of x. And I want you to graph f of x, uh, f of x minus 2 plus 3. So you're going to take this and you're going to graph it over here, but it's going to be f of x minus 2 plus 3. Well, what is that doing? That's going to shift your graph two places to the right and three up. So this point is going to be shifted over two, up three. One, two, three. So it's going to be negative two, three. Uh, negative two, three. This point here is going to be shifted over two places to the right. So one, two, that's zero, up three. One, two, three. So that's zero, eight. This point is going to be shifted over two places to the right and three up. Three. So that's going to be what? Four, eight. And this point's going to be shifted over two places, three. So over two, up three. So that's six, three. And this is what my graph would look like. It is just a transformation. It's shifting the graph over two places, up three. That is, those are the types of things that if you could do that, then I really understand that you understand how to, to um, transform a graph. All right, you guys have a great day. Um, hopefully, I'll see you on Monday uh, for the main lesson. You guys have a great one. Bye.